Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In the last video, we established a connection between our client and our server for the very first time. In this video, we're going to create an object on the server side of the project that can represent the client that just connected to the game. The reason we need something to represent the client is because we need something to track the data. We need something to handle the data. We need something to track the data. We need something to, is to offer us some functions for when the user changes room, when they leave the room, when they exit the room, when they disconnect from the game. All of the things that our client needs to handle will be handled in an object that is dedicated to the client so that we don't have to write all of our code inside of our server.js file. So the first thing that we need to do is create a create a new file and we're going to call it client.js. We'll call this one client.js. Now this file is going to exist in our root directory of the project and it is going to be what we use to represent our client. Now I'm going to add two um, two of our functions to this. I don't think I included that one, did I? No, I didn't. Have I put this in package.json? No, I've missed one. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So jump back into your package.json file. We're going to add in another um, entry, and it's going to say performance-now. And we're going to be using the latest version of that as well. Basically, that just gives us high-performance um, timers in Node.js so that we can get access to like nanosecond-specific times. Uh, and also go into go back to your terminal and run npm install again, and that's going to download that library and stick it in the node modules folder. You can see it just popped into mine there. Now, uh, so back in client.js, we need to import those two files. So we need to import now. So we're going to say var now. It's going to be equal to require, and we're going to require performance now. Performance now. We're also going to load in a library called underscore, and this is a fantastic library. I'm just going to say var underscore equals require. I'm literally putting an underscore to represent underscore, by the way. Uh, underscore is a really cool filtering library. It allows you to search through lists of data using JSON queries, and it just has a whole bunch of, of different libraries, um, not different libraries, sorry, different functions to help you search through data and different functions to help you organize data and functions to remove data from lists where certain conditions are met and ordering and sorting and just all sorts of awesomeness. Go check underscore out. It's actually really cool. Now our client needs to export a function. So I'm going to say module.exports equals function. And this function is going to be the function that represents a client. So I'm going to add two comments to this. The oh, actually I want to add three comments. The first comment is going to be, it's just going to say these objects will be added at runtime. And the reason I'm adding these comments is, is so that you can see that these objects exist under this function, but they actually don't exist until the server has established some data later on. So I'm just putting a comment in here so that we know that they exist. This dot socket equals, so that will be added onto this object at runtime. And this dot user equals something. So these two objects, we don't need to define them right now, but they will end up on this object at a later point in time. I'm only putting them in the comments so that I know that they're here later on. When I look through my code and I see client.socket, then I go back to this file and I don't see client.socket and I start freaking out wondering why is this client different? Why has it got different information on it, etc. So the first thing our client needs to do is it's going to need a function to initiate itself. So I'm going to make this dot initiate. I'm going to make that a function as well. And that's going to do some stuff. So I'm going to say do some stuff. I'm not going to do anything yet because we don't have anything to do. Now we need three handler functions to deal with those three events from the sockets. And they were data, error, and end. So I'm going to say this.data equals function data. And basically this is just to abstract that information away from the server.js file. This.error equals function. We'll pass the error across so that we can console log it. And I'm also going to say this.end equals function. And there's no parameters for end. So now we have the basis of our client object. Let's jump back to server.js and we can initiate our client. 
So we've established that client.js now exists. It has all of the methods it needs to handle a client. How do we get it into our game, into our game server and how do we actually use it? Well, this function will only fire once and that function only fires when a socket connects to the server. When a socket connects to the server, it passes that socket into this function and that's where all of the data ending and error functions take over. So we can safely assume that if this fire so if this function here has fired or been executed, that we can create a new instance of a client, um, set the handlers up so that the clients, this dot data function will deal with um, socket dot on data, socket dot on end and socket dot on uh, error. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to create an instance of a client. So I'm gonna say var c, Inst, this is going to stand for client instance, is going to be equal to a new instance of require. And that's going to require in from the current directory, the file called client.js. Now, even though we've specified we want a new instance of this file, require will always return us a uh, a referenced copy of one of this of one instance that's been loaded into memory. You don't have to worry too much about how that works. But basically, the next thing we're going to do is say var this client because it's going to be the client that we're actually dealing with is going to be equal to an instance of c inst. So that's that's getting a little bit inception right there. Uh, client is an instance of a client, but um, I hope that makes sense. So we get an instance of the file. However, that instance is always a reference to the file. And then we make a new instance of that reference. So we actually get a proper instance of the file. Whew. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, anyway, so the next thing we do is we say this client dot socket equals socket. Now, remember how when we were creating the client, I said that we would, we would add socket to the object at runtime. Well, this is where we're doing it. This, dot so this client is an instance of this file client.js dot socket equals socket, which is the socket that was assigned to this client. Again, I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, anyway, so now the client knows about its own socket. It knows about its own data. Um, it knows about all of its own information. We can say this client dot initiate because the client has that function and the ability to initiate itself. Where we'll do some stuff. That's where we're going to establish our handshake. And now we can assign our handlers. So we can actually get rid of these functions because our client has the function to do this, has the information to do this now. So what I'll do is I'll just copy these error messages, oh, sorry, these console.logs, and I'll move them over to our client file. So in this.error, I'll put the console.log socket error. Uh, in this.end, I will put the message for ending. And in this.data, I will put the message for data has arrived. And I'm just going to change the word socket in these three places to say client because now it's not a socket, it's a client. There we go. Um, so from here, we jump back into our server.js file and we can actually replace these functions with this client.error. I think that will work. It should work. Um, and then we can replace this function with this client.end. And finally, we can replace data with this client dot data. So now the client object is actually taking care of, of those methods. So when data arrives at the server, or sorry, yeah, so when data arrives at the server, it says, hey, this client deal with that data. And then that client instance, which is specific and only available to that client who's currently connected, will fire off their data function where the data can be handled and appropriately, appropriately actioned. So that was a that was where it started to get a little bit complicated. Let's rebuild the server and connect a new instance of our client. And I literally just closed my game maker project accidentally. Let me pause and bring that back. Okay, that was completely stupid of me. I actually closed my game maker project. Thankfully, I'd saved it and it was all good. So I'm going to run my game maker project. We'll minimize this so that we can see what happens on the server. And we have an error. So what is this error? Let's have a look. Cannot call method to string of undefined in client JS error dot to string undefined. Uh, I think it might be because I put the function callers on the end of this. Let me get rid of these brackets and we'll see if that fixes the error. 
I'll just run my client again. And it should be, yeah, there we go. That was the problem. So I put the parentheses on the end of the function there. So I was saying this dot error, which was actually telling JavaScript to run the function, which isn't what we wanted to happen because I didn't pass in the variables that are needed. So we're only putting a reference. So you don't put the brackets there. So it should look like what's on my screen now. So as you can see, the client object has dealt with the connection. Uh, it's called this dot initiate, which doesn't do anything yet, but it will do in the next video. We have established the fact that a client is connected. If I close the client, the end method, the end function will be called, which calls this client on end, which moves out to the client's own individual file, which ends that client and displays it on the screen. So thank you guys for watching. Please like the video and share it. Every like really helps make these series uh, grow and helps me make these series. Um, so don't forget to like the videos, please uh, leave comments and feedback in the section below the video. And thank you for watching. Bye.